Welcome one, welcome all, to a video I've been wanting to make for a while now. Today we're going to be revisiting a game that I have quite fond memories about, but it still seems to suck harder than the leech on my brain. That's right, today we're going to be taking another look at Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex, but not to review it like I did last year. Instead, we're going to be taking a look at every level in the game, well, almost every level, and ranking each individual one in order from best to worst. There are a few rules that I'm going to explain shortly, but if you like this kind of content or have suggestions for other videos I can make, then leave them down below in the comments. Or if you want to just leave a message, then yeah, drop a comment. I love reading comments and respond to everyone I see. Also remember to drop a like and subscribe because, oh my god, these videos take a long time to make. This list is subject to change, and as with everything else that I have an opinion on in my life, my thoughts and feelings towards things change over time. So don't expect me to firmly agree with this list in five years time. Also, boss levels aren't going to be included here because they're not levels, they're boss levels. And actually, the five bonus levels you unlock with relics after the game aren't going to be included either. Because while they do have gems and relics needed for completion, they don't have crystals and the main game can be beaten without playing them once. So we'll just be judging the main 25 levels here in this game. The way this list is going to work is by me giving each level a number, which you can see in this fancy document I spent a lot of time on. <laughs> And then I'll be giving you guys the levels in order, from the worst level in Wrath of Cortex to the best level in Wrath of Cortex. This is based on a combination of both the standard experience that the average player has with the level, in addition to what the completionists like myself would experience when playing the level, minus the time trial relics. Relics deviate from the core gameplay too much and are only really an incentive for backtracking, so relics won't be considered at all in this list. Because if so, I'd imagine the list would look a lot different. Also, these levels aren't necessarily ranked on difficulty. And besides, I'm such a sad loser I can beat most of these levels without losing many lives anyway. And I managed to do a playthrough of this game in one day for gameplay without getting a single game over. So yeah, difficulties off the table. Anyway, no two levels can share the same score, and the score ranges from the lowest level, ranked in at 0.4 out of 5, to the highest level on the list, ranked all the way up at 5 out of 5. I have no idea how long this video is going to be as I'm recording this commentary, so be prepared to sit through a potentially long ass ride. And I feel like an absolute babysitter for having to say this, but this list is my own opinion. If you disagree, that's absolutely fine. And as always, I'd love to know your favourite level and least favourite level down in the comments below. This has droned on long enough though, so without any more stalling, let's get into the list and take a look at the worst level in Wrath of Cortex. The level that I believe to be the worst level in Wrath of Cortex is Sea Shell Shenanigans. The level itself is infamous for being underwater, and mostly controlled in this yellow hawking mess that takes way too long to turn and is incredibly susceptible to damage for being a gigantic vibrant metallic mass. The sub itself moves clunky and can make box breaking a pain in the ass, which isn't helped by the Wumper Fruit that only serves to obstruct the projectiles from the sub. The gem isn't too hard to get here, but it's a general unpleasant experience. The level looks miserable, the enemies are dull, and the gameplay is mediocre. The exact same can be said about number 24 on this list. Coral Canyon is very similar to Seashell Shenanigans, and thus is just as shit. Everything mentioned in Seashells applies to this level too. Except, when you eventually get out of the submarine and enter free swimming, you can now use the Death Tornado spin that you got from the third boss underwater. Meaning that the swimming feels, dare I say, enjoyable? I mean, it's still Wrath of Cortex sub-levels, so it's still the absolute bottom of the barrel in terms of gameplay quality. That's the only reason for a higher score though. Anything below a score of 2 on this list is still absolute shit. That sinking feeling is exactly what I get when I look at this level. Take a chaotic environment with kamikaze planes, add turrets that target you and distract you from the objectives, no real way to break boxes, and a repetitive cycle of shooting boats in a vehicle you only control once. And you have this level. The design on the vehicle itself here is unique, but the lock-on controls need a lot of fine-tuning to be considered even, like, acceptable. And even then, the level itself feels kind of out of place and irrelevant. This is the only place in Wrath of Cortex where this vehicle is used. Thankfully though, it's over quickly, and there isn't an awful amount of boxes to break. Still feels insanely awkward, and I don't think it should be in the game though. A similar flying level in terms of quality? Um, sure. Tornado Alley is simply a fuck festival level. For the second level in the entire game, this is simply appalling. The music in this stage seems to not fit the environment at all. There's a loud repeating sound that gorges on my eardrums every time I play this and fly this incompetent piece of shit. It's kind of like that sinking feeling but with better controls, in a better vehicle. Except if that sinking feeling used this vehicle instead, I wouldn't have a sinking feeling about flying stages in this game. 
but Tornado Alley would still be a fuckfest. Easily the worst level in the first part of the game. Now the final underwater level to be ranked in this list, all the way up at 21, is H2O No. H2O No is a level that starts in a simplified, completely lateral area in the submarine. Having Crash completely traversed to one side until he emerges in an underwater laboratory. The platforming part in the lab is a nice change of pace from the fucking god awful start this level suffers from, but ultimately H2O No still sinks to the bottom of the list. It bears resemblance to the sewer stages from Crash 2, which actually execute gameplay a lot better than this level, and those levels even manage to be more vibrant than this. Everything just seems washed, the enemies are the same from the first warp room, the enemies aren't even a problem as there's too much space to move around them, it's just a very mediocre stage at best. Now moving on to number 20, one of two levels to feature the Jeep. Smokey and the Bandicoot is a bad level, and a bad reference to a movie that I know absolutely nothing about, and is completely irrelevant to the level, because the only bandit I'm interested in is this Bandicoot. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Thank you, okay, yeah, th thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. It's a race level where you can only drive forward, slowly turn left and right to avoid obstacles and break boxes, and try to race faster than the NPCs in order to get the crystal. The level is this far down the list for the Jeep's slippery controls, and the fact that you can't reverse to break boxes, meaning that if you miss a box, you need to restart the entire level in order to get the gem. And don't even think about getting the gem and the crystal in one run here. Not a fun level, but I mean I'd rather play it than the ones before it. Better than the underwater levels, even if not by much. Number 19 is a level that isn't particularly bad, I suppose. Crestroids takes Tornado Alley's approach to flying levels, but redesigns it in space and slightly changes the objectives. It's an improvement on Tornado Alley, and I wouldn't really call it an awful stage. The fact of the matter is that it doesn't feel like a fleshed out stage. More like an alpha stage or a level in development, or even like a level to be shown out at a con or something. It's more of a passing through point in the fourth warp room. If it felt like a full level as opposed to less than half of a level, I could give it more praise. The way it stands now, not all that impressive. Pretty cool music though. And hey, you get to play as Coco. Speaking of Coco levels, Avalanche is a level that's rather unique. It's the first level in this list to actually feature Coco in platforming segments of the game. But to be honest, this is the level I like the least out of all the Coco stages. Avalanche has some nice platforming at the start, a nice little bonus stage, and some neat ice physics. It even has a cool snowboard part at the end where it gives you the chance to get a hidden gem if you're good enough. Why is it only at number 18 though? Well, I just don't prefer it to other levels. It doesn't stand out to me as a level that I remember, and it's not a level I'm particularly fond of replaying. Also, that fucking gem at the end can fuck itself. It's a pretty cool mechanic and it's unique, having those posts to go through at the end to get the gem. Maybe if the camera was a bit better, or the level was a bit longer, I'd be able to appreciate it more. Eskimo Roll is a ball level, and to be honest, not the best one. You roll around a frozen wasteland in a ball trying to avoid the older bosses from Crash 3 while trying to not fall into frozen water, volcanic pits, or smoking holes. Don't get me wrong, the ball is a good addition to Wrath of Cortex, but I feel like the other levels utilise it much better. Plus I feel like the snow theme would suit Crash a lot better if he was able to walk around and platform in the snow, rather than just roll around in it. Potential foreshadowing? Here is another ball level though. I know, I promise that I don't hate the ball stages. I think when they're done right they're incredible. But Medieval Madness feels more like a geometric playground and not the good kind, with ball physics glued on top of it rather than a ball stage. It's in a similar boat to Eskimo Roll for me. If the environment isn't done right for the ball, then it's not really fun and can't really be enjoyed. A comfortable mid-tier level though all around, with a solid middle score of 3. Slightly better than ER, but still nowhere close to being the best level in Wrath of Cortex. Good level, just not fun to play. Smokey and the Bandicoot had a Jeep, but Jungle Rumble puts a different twist on it. Instead of being used for racing, the Jeep in Jungle Rumble is used in a chase sequence to escape a stampede of rhinos. The Jeep feels like it controls better here somehow, but maybe that's just because of the on-rails, auto-accelerating style of gameplay. The platforming at the start of the level is pretty cool too. Nothing too innovative and nothing too drawn out. The bonus stage is a piss take though. Seriously, fuck this power up. Oh man, do I have some stuff to say about the mech suit in this game. The mech suit is only used in a small handful of levels here, like most vehicles in Wrath of Cortex, one of which being Crate Balls of Fire. 
It's used in a chase sequence here to escape a rolling inferno blazing through a space station. Um, pretty cool. The mech is used quite differently in this level compared to the other major levels it's used in to be honest, but besides that I don't really have much to say. Only that the other mech levels are better in my opinion, and we'll be talking about them very soon. Before that though, number 13, Tsunami. Another one of Coco's platforming stages. Tsunami features an oriental theme, which is a stark contrast to the snowy environment found in Avalanche, but it bears resemblance to the oriental stages in Crash 3. The weather and environment here both work pretty well with each other, and the lighting only serves to complement them both. You also get to use a unique scooter here, which controls kind of well actually. Quite sad that it's only around for this one level. All in all, Tsunami is a pretty acceptable level. I don't have much to say about it, it's not good, it's not bad, it's bang in the middle, which is exactly what's here at number 13. Now for the better mech stage. Droid Void starts off with some platforming and some incredibly slow monkey bar segment, which, yeah, is quite painful, and it's the main reason the level's brought all the way down here, to be honest. Otherwise it'd be a lot higher in the list. But anyway, the electric time platforming combined with the whole other part of the level where you control a mech through a mechanical maze suspended in the depths of space. Honestly, I quite enjoy this level. The start of it is monumentally slow, but that's a trick comparable with most space station levels in Wrath of Cortex to be honest. The aim of the mech is quite dodgy too, and doesn't work half the time. I feel like it should be placed higher than Crate Balls of Fire though, because as a stage, the only redeeming quality about that level is the mech chase. Droidford has a slow start, but it's a brilliant level overall, and a long one at that. One that I'm quite keen on. And all in all, the first level on this list that I would truly consider good. Up there are my favourites. Not to say that this is the best level, the levels that come after this are of course better, but one of my personal favourites. The first of the Cortex Lab levels to be played in the game, Compactor Reactor ranks in at number 11. The level starts in a minecart that is only used at this spot in the game. Right, yeah, this is Wrath of Cortex, we get it. The vehicles are used once, and there's a lot of them. Anyway, the minecart part of the stage makes the level feel like it's winding up. The music starts developing as the minecart feels like it picks up speed, with numbers of nitros littering the tracks. As the tracks reach the end, you get thrust into this underground complex and begin your platforming journey through the excavating factory. The level is quite impressive. There's a whole yellow gem path at the start you can go for for a bonus gem, loads of platforming, and a neat bonus stage. A brilliant close to the first wall room in the game. Entering the top 10 levels in Wrath of Cortex now, we have Bamboozled. The last level on this list to be exclusively a vehicle level. Bamboozled is a very nice level, looks wise and play wise. Easily the best rolling ball level in the stage. I talked about it in my review of this game, and how the environment that the level offers feels natural to control, that the level itself acts as an extension of the ball gameplay itself, which is a very roundabout way of saying that the level is made very carefully with thoughts of gameplay in mind, which makes it very fun to play. Also, the music matches everything about this level, the art direction, the unique theme. Bamboozled is a very good level, okay? Banzai Bonsai sits nicely at number 9 as the first Coco stage to be played in Wrath of Cortex. A stage that features exclusively platforming in an oriental paradise with ninjas, cranes and a small dragon. Yes, I praise this stage a lot in my review of this game, because this is a level that I do indeed like a lot. Definitely the best of the Coco stages in the game. It's also the only level in the game that features a secret power-up you can get by taking a gem path. All around, yeah, an impressive level and much better than its counterpart Tsunami. Weathering Heights is an interesting level to be honest, and one that appears near the end of the game. It also reminds me of that one achievement from Minecraft. Weathering Heights is a level that has a very generic theme, but still feels amazing to play. Minus this part right here, oh my god I'm getting Joy Boy flashbacks. The bonus stage here is great, the enemies are great, the music's great, it's all very very exhilarating. These 2D scrolling parts too, absolutely brilliant. That classic formula that Crash was known for, using 3D platforming in a 2D plane, this level is probably this game's best example of it. A solid number 8 entry into the list of best levels in Wrath of Cortex. Claiming the number 7 spot on this list, we have Gold Rush, the 22nd level in Wrath of Cortex. Gold Rush is a platforming stage featured around a stereotypical western mining town. 
with prospectors using dynamite to blast away um, the streets for some reason. These vultures and throbbing cacti for some reason. Gold Rush is a long level, longer than Droid Void, and probably the biggest level in the game, with a monumental box count to match. There's also this weird rail cart section halfway through, which isn't quite the same as the minecart and slows the pace down quite a lot and feels kind of pointless. But nothing slows down a level more in Wrath of Cortex than, say it with me, these monkey bar segments. The platforming here, sure it's great, but Gold Rush in general is a bag of star mix that's half eggs. The good parts, yeah sure they're amazing, but take a random look at any point in the bag and you might be disappointed. Bet you didn't expect me to put this level here, did you? I don't know if it's the sheer amount of times I've played this level, or how I can remember it like the back of my hand, but I love Arctic Antics. I think it does the job of being a first level really well. Ignore what this loser says here about it, and I quote, being fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Arctic Antics is not fine. Arctic Antics stands to be one of the best levels in this game. Not just any old level that gets a good old 4.2 out of 5, although the jump to the death route I always seem to miss and I have no idea why. The stage is basic enough and fun to complete while providing challenge with no abilities unlocked. The gem isn't painfully difficult to obtain here on your first run, and there's a nice death route to give you that coloured gem if you want it. Even the coloured gem matches the theme here, come on. Truly, truly beautiful stuff. Going from the first level in the game to the final level in the game now, it's funny how that happens isn't it? Cortex Vortex is another level on one of Cortex's space stations, which I already mentioned to have very slow starts. The level exclusively features classic platforming, and to be honest, that's what makes it so great. No slow monkey bars here, just kinda slow platforming at the start. No ridiculous vehicle you see only a handful of times. Just standard platforming with standard enemies that are acceptable. A very good level, and a great way to end the game. Getting into the real, close contested best levels now. Wizards and Lizards is a very nice crap bash forming level, with a dragon chase sequence which is the entire reason that the level is iconic to me by the way. There's wizards and bats that litter the whole level in addition to knights and smouldering coals that fly out from the fire towards you. Overall I really like this level, and don't believe I'm alone on this, this seems to be a rather popular opinion. Just like Arctic Antics and Gold Rush, there's a death route in this level that you can try for a coloured gem, which seems to be a theme along these popular stages funnily enough. Wizards and Lizards regardless though, a very good stage. This stage, oh man, it's like everything that Wizards and Lizards did right and do it better, minus the chase sequence. The Gauntlet is a very nice middle ground stage in terms of platforming difficulty, needing you to make use of the double jump that you just recently unlocked from the second boss. The enemies here aren't anything new, mostly reused from the stage we just talked about, but the hazards are really what makes the stage. And I don't even think I have to say it, but yes I'm going to anyway. This level has a death route with a chance for you to get a gem, but I'm not going to mention it because the next level does too, and I'm tired of saying the words death route. But yes, Crash and Burn crashes in at number 2, as the second best level in Wrath of Cortex. At this point in the game, you've just unlocked every core ability, and while you can have a fun and comfortable time playing this level without using them, the power-ups make this level really fun to play, and Crash and Burn really creates a playground for you to test them. I think visually where the level really shines for me though is with the bonus stage, that gives you a full view of the volcano lab in the background. Fucking amazing. An absolutely beautiful level, even with these parrots that like to headbutt the floor. However, there is still one level that stands out as the best. But before we go to the number one best level in Wrath of Cortex, let's take a look back at the levels we've covered so far. Number 25 was Seashell Shenanigans, a poor excuse for an underwater level. Number 24 was Coral Canyon, an ever so slightly better execution of number 25, but still just as bad. Number 23 was That Sinking Feeling, followed by number 22, Tornado Alley. Two awful flying stages. Number 21 was H2O No, the only other underwater level in this stage that is a bit better than the previous levels. Number 20 was Smokey and the Bandicoot, a mediocre race level with bad controls. Number 19 was Crasteroids, not a bad level, but pretty much an unfinished level. Number 18 was Avalanche, the worst Coco platforming stage. Then we had Eskimo Roll at number 17, the worst of the ball stages in this game. Number 16 was Medieval Madness, an unpolished stage that doesn't feel designed for the ball. Number 15 was Jungle Rumble, which saw the return of the Jeep in a chase sequence. Not all that much better though, just okay at best. Number 14 was Crate Balls of Fire, a platforming turned mech suit chase level, rather unique and in all fairness not too bad. Number 13 was Tsunami, a comfortable cocoa stage with basic platforming, a nice chase sequence and a brilliant environment and colour palette. Number 12 was Droid Void, 
A level that I like quite a lot, but suffers from a slow start and not being all too memorable, all things considered. Number 11 was Compactor Reactor. A level with simple but neat platforming, but an unusual vehicle at the start. Number 10 was claimed by Bamboozled, the best ball stage in Wrath of Cortex, with absolutely beautiful design and comfortable controlling around the geometry. Number 9 was Banzai Bonsai, the first Coco stage in the game, which is basically a superior version of Tsunami. Number 8 was Weathering Heights, a nice linear run through of classic platforming. Number 7 was Gold Rush, the absolute marathon of a level itself, with some of the best theming in the game. Number 6 was Arctic Antics, an example of an introductory stage done right. Number 5 was Cortex Vortex, an example of a closing stage done brilliantly. Number 4 was Wizards and Lizards, followed by number 3 The Gauntlet. And the number 2 spot, we had the volcano level of Crash and Burn. So, it should be obvious what the number 1 level is. Without further ado, let's take a look at the number 1 level in Wrath of Cortex. Fahrenheit Frenzy is an absolute god of a stage. A literal platforming saint of a stage. Where do I even begin to explain how good this level is? Well, let's start at the start, of course. The level begins in an intriguing lava-filled cave, with red haze coating the level and everything in vision. If you didn't already notice too, you start the level in a vehicle, which actually controls pretty good. Sadly, it's only used at one point in the game, like many other vehicles in this game but it's just a flight through a linear hallway, avoiding obstacles and such. Not too bad, all things considered. Then just like Compactor Reactor, you're thrown into the middle of a mining complex. But this factory is literally seeping with heat so intense that I can hear my GameCube heat up. There's plenty of red fog here, partially obscuring the level, which goes absolutely amazingly with the streams of hot lava pouring straight through the factory for some reason. It's also incredible how neither the lab assistants or Crash have been cooked alive down here. Fahrenheit is also a mammoth of a stage, so have fun clearing the level while running over conveyor belts, avoiding giant pistons and fire vents, running through an x-ray machine and trying to ignore Cortex's absolutely useless minions. The bonus stage here too is also one of the few bonus stages in the game that I actually found surprisingly challenging, and I had to force reset it a few times because of one changing crate at the start, which starts ticking and moving before you even begin the bonus stage. No death route here though, just classic vanilla platforming with a kick-ass theme, a crystal, a gem, and a relic. But nobody cares about the relics. Oh, wait. Anyway, here concludes my video ranking every level in Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. This video has been an absolutely great time to make and I'm very glad that I made it. Sorry about the lack of uploads, most of my time recently has gone into making this video, which oh my god has passed over 20 minutes now. I plan to make more videos like this in the future as it adds variety to the reviews and I also intend to start making let's plays, so let me know what you think about that in the comments. If you like this video, then subscribe, share it with your friends, and drop a thumbs up and a comment. Also feel free to check out my other videos on the channel, and go find one that you like. This video has gone on long enough though, my friends. My name is Flinny, and this has been the rankings of every level in Wrath of Cortex. Thank you ever so much for watching, and take care.